How can pride and faith impact our relationships, especially in marriage? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. One day, a small boy and his sister were arguing, and it eventually became a fight. Just then, the mother came in and demanded that they stop. She asked, Why are you fighting? The girl then explained, Oh, Mama, we're not fighting. We are just pretending we are married. St. Paul teaches us in today's first reading to take away our pride so that we can be wise. Peter, in today's gospel, shows us how he, an experienced fisherman, swallowed his pride, subsumed himself to Jesus, the son of a carpenter, in faith to be led to an abundant harvest of fish. Even as far back in the Old Testament, Adam and Eve's pride caused them to be separated from God. Their own relationship may have been strained after this fallout as they could have resorted to incessant blaming of each other for the bad fortune that befell them. And after Cain killed Abel, their marital life must have become worse. And I suppose Cain fell from favor too, and this kept his own marriage to a woman that bore them their son Enoch, also most problematic. I quote from 1 Corinthians, To the married I give this command, not I but the Lord, that the wife should not separate from her husband, but if she does separate, let her remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. Yes, we need to oftentimes be the fool in our marriages, eat humble pie to keep our marriages from breaking apart. We can think of ourselves as always right, judging our spouse often, being hysterical and historical in the process, as we look back to past sins committed by the other, to lay blame and responsibility for the souring of our relationship. But this can only keep our marriages from blossoming. What is true in marriage, I would say, is also true in our relationships in general, among parents and children, among siblings, among friends who become enemies, unless we tuck our tails and reach out to be reconciled. I repeat Paul's words using the Good News translation. You should not fool yourself. If any of you think that you are wise by this world's standards, you should become a fool in order to be really wise. When we leave everything in our relationships dependent on our own efforts, we will at some point give up, for our human emotions are governed by our own human understanding of life that is colored by our own past experiences. We are human, and our vital weakness is in our judgment of others. We need our faith in our loving God to take away the pride in us so that we may be restored in our relationships. For our relationships to be made whole again, especially in our marriages, let me offer you this acronym, S-P-O-U-S-E. S. Selflessly give in. Oftentimes, we need to forgo our own desires to satisfy that of our own spouses. In the vernacular, it is called pagpaparaya. Be the sacrificial lamb without counting the frequency and the costs. It will bless you, multiply. Unless your spouse has a psychological disorder, setting the example of selflessness will contaminate your spouse, who will eventually become selfless too. It may take time, but it will be worth it. P. Pray together. Praying together lets the Holy Spirit influence your judgment and softens your pain that lets you to reach out to your spouse with a disposition to resolve and reconcile. It is difficult to pray together when you are in pain, but this is the best way to gain the grace because you subsume your pride for a bigger goal. Let's also pray for the energy to spend time with our spouse, as the tendency is to offer everything for our children and leave nothing for our better half, who may become bitter and resentful in time. Husbands, pray that you will love your wife more. Wives, pray that you will respect your husband more. Oh, open your ears. Communication is one of the pillars of a marriage. Our listening skills are most often neglected in a supposed dialogue. Doing so may turn a discussion into a big fight. Don't try to fix things when all your spouse wants is a listening ear. Set a regular time to talk and listen. Affirm, honor, praise. When hurt, do not accuse, but use the pronoun I in explaining your emotional hurt or distress. This keeps your spouse in a listening rather than a fighting mode. You unconditionally love. Everyone has bad days. We all have our flaws and quirks. Never keep a mental and emotional diary of the wrongs, mistakes, and weaknesses of your spouse. Accept each other in all of your spouse's glorious quirks and personality flaws. Be the one to die to yourself a thousand times. Doing so will help you to be more open, more giving, and forgiving of your spouse. Of course, this needs the grace of the Holy Spirit. S. Serve. Find ways to serve each other. In our own tiredness, we often neglect the needs of our spouse, sacrificing our time and our own needs, helping in our house chores, accompanying our spouse to his or her own activities. 
volunteering to do errands for the children, waking up early to help our spouse prepare for the children's needs, etc., etc., will do wonders in keeping our marriage. Let us look for ways to inconvenience ourselves for the convenience of our spouse. E. Explore a middle ground. We cannot always be right. We must acknowledge that our spouse also has many bright and right ideas. We must learn to compromise. If you have two diametrically opposing views, find the middle ground. It will be the wisest and most correct thing to do. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, you will become the perfect spouse in an imperfect marriage made beautiful by the Lord. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill my heart with selfless love in all my relationships with my spouse, my children, my parents, my siblings, my co-workers, my community. And rid me of the pride that hinders me from truly loving you and my neighbor. All these I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.